What new details can you tell us? Thank you, Neil. Colette, it was day four of the Byron Smith Trail in Little Falls today, and it may not have been as intense today, but it was still emotional. That's right, Colette. Westwood Elementary has an interesting competition that includes all students in grades kindergarten through fifth grade. An emotional day once again here in Little Falls. For UTVS News from Little Falls, I'm Scott Gross. So with students who have disabilities, how are they able to manage? I'll show you after the break. New details on the case are surfacing. 17-year-old Nicholas Brady and 18-year-old Haley Kiefer were allegedly robbing a home on Thanksgiving Day when they were shot and killed. Police responded to a multi-car pileup which left one person injured Thursday night. Well, Scott, this mild winter is good for you and I, I know, since we do prefer these warmer temperatures. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Alyssa. And let's see if BJ can keep our spirits up into the weekend. Prosecutors are asking for more time in charging the man suspected of killing Officer Tom Decker. Opening statements are underway today in Hudson, Wisconsin, as 35-year-old Aaron Schaffhausen's trial gets underway. Day four of the Byron Smith trial here in Little Falls was less as intense as in previous days, but it still had its share of emotions. On Thursday, the prosecution focused on the autopsies of Nicholas Brady and Haley Kiefer. The scene was a graphic one as autopsies were shown of both victims. The prosecution star witness was Kelly Mills from the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office. Mills performed the autopsies on Brady and Kiefer. Nick Brady was shot three times by a Mini-14 rifle, the third time being the fatal shot. Haley Kiefer was shot six times, once with the rifle before it jammed, then five more times with a 22 caliber handgun. The fifth shot, Kelly Mills claims, was the fatal blow, a point-blank shot behind the left ear. Through the autopsies and the toxicology reports conducted, there was no trace of alcohol or drugs in the system of Nicholas Brady. In Haley Kiefer, traces of marijuana was found in her urine, along with dextromethropan, a drug used in cough suppressants that, if used in the right amounts, could be abused in what some call robotripping or triple C, which can give a person an out-of-body-like feeling and change their perceptions. Head attorney for the defense, Stephen Meshbesher, had a plan in his chance to cross-examine. She's describing things, and I'm going to cross-examine her and uh, get a little more descriptive. It was Meshbesher's defense that claims Nicholas Brady, although shot two times, was still able to cause Byron Smith harm, even if his shots were near fatal. He felt Brady still could have retaliated. In the case of Haley Kiefer, the defense claimed she was on an intoxicating amount of over-the-counter drugs and there was no telling what she could have done. Byron Smith claims he was afraid for his life. Sitting right behind me in the courtroom was Nicholas Brady's mother, and at times... Her head would be in her hands crying. She didn't want to see what had happened to her little boy. And also during intermissions, Byron Smith as well. You could see emotions getting the better of him, where he would have his own head in his hands and even running his hands through his hair during intermissions. He would also stay by himself in the courtroom while everybody left. An emotional day once again here in Little Falls. For UTVS News from Little Falls, I'm Scott Gross. Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Ivan Bartha knows all too well the dangers of high water. The ice held on for a long time, and obviously you can see that the water is high up against this first island right here. We get a lot of people that say, oh, I've been paddling for X amount of years, you know, here, there, whatnot. With the current rising temperatures this spring, more people want to get on the water. And for that reason alone, Ivan has concerns. We know from um, paddle sports accident data that a lot of the accidents occur with canoeing and kayaking generally happen during high water times and when it's cold. With higher water levels, one would think that you could surf right over the rocks, over any downed trees or any other blemish that the river has to offer. But even these professionals know when to steer clear. You can't see it, and again, there's, you know, if you can't navigate through this stuff effectively in a canoe or a kayak, you can really get yourself backed into a corner. Not only does high water pose a problem, the speed of the river also is a factor to take into consideration. Probably moving somewhere in the neighborhood of probably five to six knots. Um, that's cranking pretty good. If you're not experienced on the waters, please stay off until it's safe. Otherwise, Ivan will have to make a phone call that he does not want to make. We don't want to be on the front page of the newspaper where there's a boating accident, where we 
sent somebody out irresponsibly when we shouldn't have. As much as you may enjoy being on the water, please proceed with caution so that your first time out this spring is not your last. For UTVS Sports, I'm Scott Gross. The Minnesota winter has many of us thinking about packing our bags and getting away. But what if you really could, at a discounted rate at that? I think because um, the economy is improving, uh, we are seeing some increase in numbers in study abroad uh, than we did with the economic downturn in 2008 and 2009. Erica Klein shares why she decided to study abroad. Um, I actually heard about it through a friend. Um, her name is Molly McAllister and she definitely influenced me to go. I was a little bit scared about it at first just because it's such a big decision, but um, she kind of convinced me to do it and I'm so glad that I did because it changed me for the better. St. Cloud State University President Earl H. Potter III spoke at the international celebration in February about his plans to increase even double the St. Cloud State students that will study abroad by 2019. I think it's definitely doable. It's a challenge, of course, but um, I think that the university is now in a place where you know we have the globalization pillar and um, there are many um, points that have been in, put into place in the last couple of years, so I think we're at a good foundation point, and it's definitely um, something that can happen if we have the support of the entire university. If I were able to wave a magic wand and, and get my wish, um, I would wish that every student here at St. Cloud State would be able to have a study abroad experience. I consider it that important. Like it's completely changed my entire view of life and just the like my view of the entire world and it's definitely inspired me to want to travel more and I think traveling is so important and on top of that it looks really good on your resume to study abroad so I think that everyone should do it it's such a good decision. With the ever-changing job landscape around the United States learning abroad could be beneficial. Now getting away from the winters in Minnesota could all be your reality. Scott Gross. They can go anywhere in the world. UTBS News.